Welcome to Book Root Readings, your channel for classic, nature, and living children's books. Click the subscribe button to be notified of new readings. Enjoy the story! A New Beginning Celebrating the Spring Equinox by Wendy Pfeffer Illustrated by Linda Bleck A New Beginning Celebrating the Spring Equinox by Wendy Pfeffer Illustrated by Linda Bleck For Wade, Evan, Margaret, and Miranda, W.P. For my children, David and Sarah, and my husband, David, L.B. Leaf buds uncurl on bare branches. Frogs leave their winter hideaways, hop to the nearest water, and lay eggs. Crocus tips poke through melting snow, woodchucks whistle, chickadees chirp, and dragonflies emerge from rivers and ponds. The long nights of winter shorten, and with more hours of sunlight, the weather warms. In the northern half of the world, winter gives way to spring. Robins wing their way back north and animals give birth to their young. People prepare their fields and plant crops in the softening earth. As the bright sun returns, people open their windows to welcome warm breezes and clear out winter's dust. We pack away our bulky jackets and wear brightly colored clothes to match the fresh shades of spring. The days gradually grow longer, the nights shorter, until around March 21st, day and night are equal. On this day, the earth is tilted so that the sun is directly over the equator. This day is called the spring equinox, meaning equal night. Winter's over, spring begins. In many cultures' calendars, the spring equinox marks a new year, just as January 1st is the beginning of our calendar year. For thousands of years, in different places and in different ways, people have celebrated spring as a time of new beginnings, when the land becomes alive again. Spring, vernal equinox, day and night equal. Summer solstice, the longest day with the most sunshine. Fall, autumnal equinox, day and night equal. Winter solstice, the shortest day with the least sunshine. Long ago, some say too long to be traced, the Chinese began celebrating the end of winter and a new beginning, spring. Today, the second new moon after the winter solstice still marks the Chinese New Year. Families clean their homes to sweep away traces of bad luck. They buy fruits and flowers, hang red banners with good wishes written on them. Dancers wear paper lion masks to scare away evil spirits and bring good luck. Children receive money in red bags, since red means good luck, too. On the 15th night, people parade with paper lanterns while fireworks fill the air. Children cheer as a long silk and paper dragon weaves its way down the street to the beat of a drum. The dragon's appearance is a way of wishing peace, fortune, and good luck to all during the coming year. Over 3,000 years ago, the people of ancient Persia celebrated the spring equinox as a new beginning during No Rus, which means New Year. Today, modern-day Iranians welcome spring just as the ancient Persians did. Ten days before No Rus, 
They plant wheat or barley in a flat dish to represent new beginnings and the cycle of life. A few days later, colorfully dressed troubadours announce the coming of the new year. On no rust, families stay home and wait for the exact time the spring equinox begins. Many exchange gifts, think good thoughts, do good deeds, and eat candied fruit to sweeten their lives. They believe that joy and happiness defeat bad spirits. Over 2,000 years ago, the people of India celebrated Holi at the beginning of spring to ensure good crops. In Hindu mythology, Holika was a demoness who burned in a fire. Now during Holi, on the night of the full moon in March, the villagers light giant bonfires to represent the triumph of good over evil. The heat of the bonfire is a sign of the hot summer to come, and the villagers bury the ashes to grow better crops. The next morning, the mood changes from gloomy to jolly. People of all ages toss multicolored powder with glitter over each other and load squirt toys with red tinted water to spray on anyone passing by. They all celebrate the coming of spring, singing and dancing with soaking wet rainbow colored clothes. Many believe this was the origin of April Fool's Day when people play tricks on one another. About 1,200 years ago, the Maya people in Mexico built many structures to map the cycles of the sun. Their existence centered on the sun and its effect on planting and harvesting. With their vast knowledge of astronomy, architecture, and mathematics, the Maya carefully planned and precisely built structures to predict the seasons. At Chichen Itza, they built the El Castillo Pyramid. Here people can still witness an amazing feat. Each year on the day of the spring equinox, the afternoon sun makes shadows that look like the body of a snake over 100 feet long, slithering down the pyramid. At sunset, the body joins a huge stone carving of a snake head located at the bottom of the main staircase. Spring has arrived. Planting can begin. Maslenitsa, or Pancake Week, in Russia dates back over 1,000 years. This seven-day sun festival celebrated the returning light. It bade goodbye to the long winter and hello to spring. Families ate warm, round, golden pancakes that looked like the sun. The more butter they spread on each pancake, the hotter the sun was supposed to be during the coming summer. They enjoyed horse-drawn sleigh rides in a semi-circular trail across the snow, symbolizing the sun's path across the sky. Today, families still celebrate outdoors. They dance, sing songs, jingle bells, enjoy hot tea, and of course, eat pancakes. At night, bonfires are lit. Brightly dressed straw scarecrows representing Lady Maslanitsa are tossed into the fire. When Maslanitsa is over, spring begins. Almost 500 years ago, when the Cree Native Americans experienced long, hungry winters, berries, one of the first signs of spring, were an, an important sign of the warm season to come. They not only ate the berries, but because bears feasted on them too, the Cree knew where to hunt bears. They honored the first berries each year by placing them in a bowl holding them high and thanking the Great Spirit. 
the Jewish holiday of Passover celebrates a new beginning. Over 3,000 years ago, Hebrews were slaves in Egypt. After 400 years of slavery, they were finally freed. Each spring, on the first night of the eight-day holiday, families gather for a meal called a Seder. They eat special foods, sing songs, and retell the story of how they became free. Each food on the Seder plate tells a different part of the story. A lamb bone symbolizes the lamb that was sacrificed in the ancient temple in Jerusalem. A sprig of parsley dipped in salt water reminds Jews of the tears their people shed when they were slaves. Haroset, a paste of nuts, apples, and wine, reminds them of the clay the slaves used to make bricks. Bitter herbs recalled the bitterness of slavery. Matzah, a flatbread, reminds them there was no time for bread to rise before the slaves fled Egypt. An egg symbolizes the new life that begins each spring. Each year on the day of the spring equinox, ancient Saxons in Germany celebrated a festival for the goddess of springtime named Eustra. Her earthly symbol was a rabbit. Rabbits and eggs were symbols of rebirth. Many Anglo-Saxons in England dye eggs by boiling them with flower petals and leaves. Brightly colored eggs represent the bright sun of springtime. At the same time that pagans celebrated their goddess of springtime, Eustra, Christians observed Jesus' new beginning when they believe he was raised from the dead. As more people became Christians, the name of their celebration changed from Eustra to Easter. On the first Sunday, after the full moon, after the spring equinox, Christians celebrate Easter. Many worship outdoors at early sunrise services or in churches filled with flowers and glorious music. Children find Easter baskets filled with chocolate rabbits and colorful eggs, still symbols of Easter. Today, families of all kinds still celebrate spring as a time of new beginnings. They plant flowers and vegetables, play baseball, ride bikes, fly kites, have picnics, enjoy the return of warm days, and welcome spring. A new beginning. Around March 21st, the sun is directly over the equator. In the northern half of the world, that's the spring equinox. Winter's over, spring begins. On the same day, in the southern half of the world, the fall equinox occurs. Summer's over, fall begins. All over the world, there are 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. Around June 21st, the northern half of the world tilts towards the sun and the weather begins to warm. That's the summer solstice. Spring's over. Summer begins on the longest day of the year. On the same day in the southern half of the world, the earth tilts away from the sun and the winter solstice occurs, falls over. Winter begins on the shortest day of the year. Around September 21st, the sun is directly over the equator. In the northern half of the world, that's the fall equinox. Summer's over. Fall begins. On the same day in the southern half of the world, the spring equinox occurs. Winter's over. Spring begins. All over the world, there are 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. Around December 21st, when the northern half of the world tilts away from the sun and the weather cools, that's the winter solstice. Falls over. Winter begins on the shortest day of the year. On the same day, 
the southern half of the world tilts towards the sun and the summer solstice occurs. Spring's over. Summer begins on the longest day of the year.